אוקיי. Hello and welcome to Word Up Podcast. I'm Evie. And I'm Webster. And today we're here with the underground artist of Amsterdam, Zino. Hi. Hi there. <laughs> Thank you for having me. How are you today? Um, I'm, I'm feeling good today. I've had finally a day off after a long uh, production period. Yeah. You had uh, quite a run with your documentary and a lot of shows, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, basically I'm an underground artist in Amsterdam. Um, started as a dancer and uh, now I'm running uh, this theater collective it's called fractal dance collective and we are uh, Amsterdam based interdisciplinary um, a movement mm-hmm. so uh, what we do is, is we compose music for theater um, we make videography documentaries and theater experiences wow. yeah sounds I've exciting got a mixed bag of creative <laughs> elements exactly how does that, yeah how does exactly. that come come together um well that actually goes way back like when i was a kid i started as uh as a guitarist oh. um that was my number one passion and and before i knew i was a music teacher um i found out i, I didn't like that so much as as uh, just practicing or, or performing for somebody so i decided to stop to stop my career as a, as a music teacher and and went into to dancing mm-hmm. um, i kept evolving and and find other other friends um, yeah basically we 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 danced on the street um, and we we put all those disciplines together And before we know we were an entrepreneurship on the street that evolved into uh, the professional world actually yeah and how big is your collective we are with four people yeah um, a non-profit organization yeah okay nice so what, what was the move to the streets then as opposed to I don't know a lot of people like dance and competitions and you know they do stage stuff and uh, theater as you as you mentioned why why the yeah. streets what drew you to that um, well in, in in particular I think it was a, a crew an Amsterdam based crew that that took me to the street and I was so fascinating about the lifestyle to 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 have that that freedom and space to keep developing and, and make your money on the street. Um, but at the same time, I didn't real, realize it was entrepreneurship because what we were doing there is creating a, a, a product and selling it to the people. The people might like it, they, may, they might not like it. So it, it's, it's all up to you. If you have a good, good, good marketing strategy on the street and the people like it, they, they pay. And before we know, yeah. It, it became more serious mm. um, and of course the, the the urban dance culture is uh, is a very street street based culture it comes from from the USA it, it started on the street <clears throat> um, in, in Europe it's much different people go to studios they go to uh, competitions um, and you see you see the difference in styles as well the street style is much more based on control because you don't don't g- make slides on concrete or or spins on concrete you don't do that mm. you don't want to get get your 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 head burst open yeah, on the it's concrete dangerous, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow and what sort of styles are you guys working with when you're performing on the streets um mainly break dance right yeah but when we got involved in theater we we realized that um, breaking is is for us it's it's our fundament It's our, it's our it's our power it's our core um, in theater there are much more different styles that really can tell a story um, breakdance is more about complexities and how far you can push the limit the physical limits um, so we, we we try to experiment 
create our own style and, and research in different styles like contemporary or modern dance and, and make that bridge, <clears throat> which, is, which is very rare because breaking is re really like masculine. Uh, modern dance can be really soft and feminine. So mm. this is for us really, uh, really our goal. Like, okay, we, we want to make a, a really nice contrast there on stage to show the, the soft side, the human side, and, and then at the same time also that animalistic explosive side. Mm. Yeah. And your documentary is called uh, From the Streets to the Seats? Yes. <laughs> yes. The trailer looks dope. <laughs> as <laughs> <laughs> it looks so good. Thank you, thank yeah. you. I, I, I have to uh, give a shout out to to, to my man uh, Constantine. He's mm. also a dancer in our collective, but uh, also the videographer. Mm. And he's working. Um, he's been working on this documentary with um, a documentary maker from from Swiss. His name is Flo. Um, he works with a lot of German rap artists, and, and yeah, their skills together. It's it's. it's it's next level, so I'm I'm really blessed to work with yeah. uh, those souls. Yeah. And what inspired you to actually make the documentary itself? Um, well, all the work that we that we do that we re research comes from a personal experience, and and we we try to emphasize that so other people can identify them mm. themselves within those stories. Um, and I think for now this is our main uh, our main focus. Mm. I like it a lot. I wanted to know about the story of the documentary. Uh, it seemed super gritty. Uh, me coming from London, like I know the grit, you know, you see it in London, it's very obvious to me. But when you're in Amsterdam, it's hard for me to like to see it. It's like this pretty cute town with canals <laughs> and, you know, people riding on bicycles and stuff. Uh, tell us a little bit about the underground scene here in the, the, the Netherlands or Amsterdam in particular. Yeah, well... Um, what I can tell about the underground scene is that it's 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 very small. Um, there's a big commercial scene because, um, for example, names like like Red Bull they are involved in the in the community, a worldwide community. So <clears throat> I think everywhere in the world where is where is a, a big city like like London or or, or New York, there are um, hitters. And hitters, that's that's basically our, our piece, it's called. Um, that's about dancers that wants to make a living, that decide not to be in that commercial community, but choose to, to um, develop within the raw, in the raw underground circle. Um, so everywhere where, where are tourists, there are hitters. <laughs> right, right. Makes yeah. sense. I like it. It must be interesting actually developing your work. I don't know, maybe tell me if I'm wrong, but you're sort of developing your work with the audience in front of you. Did yeah. you ever get to any points where you're like, oh man, this isn't working. These guys aren't feeling our vibe or what's that <laughs> process of developing your style yeah. like live in front of people? Well, um, are, are you talking about um, an audience on the street or an yes. audience in a the theater? Because that's, that's completely different. I meant in the streets. On the street, yeah. yeah. So you, you can imagine that if, if you dance and you do it really good and you have a good energy, people might like it, people might drop a coin. But it goes, uh, it goes deeper than that. I think it's more about how can you build a, a good show um, where, is, for example, comedy involves. You make, you make the people smile and it, it becomes more interactive. Um, so for example, we take a, a hostage from the, 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 the audience. We put them in the middle so the people around won't leave. Yeah. You, you, you make that tension line from the beginning till the end. That's pretty cool. Um, or scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and as final, then, then somebody flips over, over the, the, the hostage. Um, compared to theater, it's... it's uh, it's different. Like you do a good marketing, people buy a ticket, and if you if you make a bad show, people will stay there till the end, right? Because they paid for it. Yeah. If you do that on the street, you make a bad show, people walk away, and you end up uh, without groceries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting because in theatre, I guess you sell them before you arrive. Yes. They must know your name or seen the poster or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of marketing materials do you guys create around that for theatre? Because it's 
you know, you don't expect to see sort of urban performance in theatres. I don't anyway. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it, I can tell a little bit about it because it's not not really my um, it's not not my side. But everything we do in daily life is um, is dedicated towards towards dancing. So every every step that we make and and every every move that that we do, we document it, and we make a nice uh, marketing uh, side out of it videography or or using people from our network yeah right 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 and That's how cool. was the transition transition from <laughs> the streets to the theater mm, <clears throat> I, i came with this idea actually six years ago yeah um we were performing on the street also also in the winter oh. and every time we perform we, you, you put a you put this mask on so so the people will like it you become this entertainer but right. the human side is not it's not present anymore it's mm. really about you becoming a product yeah um and this was for me interesting enough to research like oh how can we put that contrast from the the, the performing side towards the human side in theater yeah because that's in my opinion what theater is about showing the the, the human side the vulnerability of of, of a human and yeah. all the fa facets of it And uh, how was it to dance for Obama? <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask that question. You saw that. Uh, well, we did not have the chance to, to, to see him sitting or, or whatsoever. But, um, you, guys, how, how much the people were there in the audience? Like 5,000 people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's like this this rock star movie, you know, like, like you see this rock star and before he comes on stage everything slows down, mm -hmm. goes in slow motion and, and it's really like that. <laughs> it's like okay, I have to go on stage now and then you run on stage and you see this, this huge crowd right. and then Then you get this moment of, of realization. Okay, now it's gonna happen, and you, you have to switch on to yeah, yeah, to to dance. But do you feel like your mindset doesn't change if you perform to I don't know, like in the street for 50 people or 5,000 or 50,000? At at that moment, yeah, yeah, of course it it, it changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, it's it's about the control in your body is different. Yeah. Uh, for example, I I can do I can do. Um, For example, I can stand on one arm very easily, mm. but when I do that in front of 5,000 people, it's not that easy anymore. Mm. You feel everything. The pressure of the people. Yeah, the imagine. pressure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the adrenaline, you know, it must be a lot. Big time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And the lights, because it's also like the blinding lights in a way, I guess. That's, uh, that's <laughs> yeah, that's a, a thing on its own, yeah. And you have that in the theater also, right? Because you don't really see the audience, do you? Well, we, we, we really appreciate to work with a good uh, uh, a light technician, yeah. a light designer that knows how uh, the perspective of, of a dancer on stage. Because uh, sometimes we experience that we do a move and, and they put the stroboscope light on it and... and Yeah, <laughs> the chance is, is big that you that you fall. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, I want to know about your team. How did you guys get together? How did you build your relationship? Because I imagine you spend a lot of time working together as well. You know, how how does that come about that you trust these people to be your core core squad? <laughs> yeah. Um, also, also this comes from the street. Um, like my team is is the most um, dedicated persons I know towards the, the, the genre I I'm, I'm, I'm diving in um, and also the most loyal loyal persons um, so we, we yeah if you can imagine if you were for five years every day on the street and also in the winter you build a certain connection with each other and you know the ins and outs yeah it's your family yes yeah. yes so we, we also thought about if we want to include some a new member he has to prove himself Big wow. time, yeah. <laughs> And you saying he has, so you are not open for girls. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> are you really about to try? <laughs> are, you, are you volunteering right now? Um, <laughs> of course, I'm not d d discriminating. No, just a question. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like um, what we do is is 
mostly based on, on our hands and on, on strength and control. So mm. if a girl is capable to do that, uh, then of course we open to, to collaborate for sure. That's yeah. quite interesting. I'd, I'd never thought about that. But do guys and girls in the same genre of performance dance differently because of the different physicality of your bodies? Is that is that something you realize? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So absolutely. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, but but I have to say I get inspired by by many many girls in in um, in the modern dance scene or contemporary dance scene because they 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 trust more their 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 feelings and and guys are I think a bit more rational in in a way of. Uh, of moving, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's more and more structured. If we want to to do something, it's like okay, we do this ten thousand times, and then it's there. And 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 the approach of a a female dancer would come more intern, internal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I heard about um, mixed martial artists uh, who do ballet to get better at movement. Mm. So they do ballet so that they can, you know, bend a little better or they're just a bit more fluid with their movements as opposed to being like super rigid. Do you guys do anything that's a little bit, you know, out of the ordinary to like get into the rhythm? Anything at all? Um, ooh, yeah, we, we, we stretch a lot. <laughs> cool. <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. That's um, good. And then, then we have um, Robert, my, my companion. He's doing uh, kickboxing. And I, I think I can also see that in his, his style of dancing that he's, he has a very strong, uh, strong core. Right. I wish I also did some kickboxing, but unfortunately I, I did not. I'm not that strong in my core. And therefore I'm more flexible. Right. <laughs> yeah. Pros and cons, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, speaking of ballet, I've, I've heard you started working for the National Ballet. The National Opera. No, opera, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, recently I, I did a, a project with uh, the Cygnus Gymnasium in Amsterdam. It's a school, and uh, they made an opera, and the the director of the National Opera was uh, was there. Right. And he liked the collaboration, so he asked me for a main production. Nice. It's going to start in January and premiere in March. It's called a Ritratto. Okay, that's exciting. That's exciting, man. Yeah, well. pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, you can you can imagine that when I started dancing, I was practicing in front of the the opera on the street, on on the concrete, mm. and, and now it's my time to step in and become a choreographer there. And how does it feel? Weird, <laughs> <laughs> strange, weird. Um, but I'm also very excited about it to, to be in in a in a team of, of, of such professionals from a different discipline. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited about it. Yeah. Right. And what would you say to young and up-and-coming, uh, uh, I guess, students of performance who want to get into the underground scene? Is that for everybody? What are, there, what are the pros and cons? And what, what's your journey been so far? If you had to look back and tell someone, you know. Mm, I, I think it's also um, re related to my generation that... When I started, there were not so many opportunities as uh, it has developed now. Um, like I mentioned before, you have big competitions like Red Bull and, 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 and Monster, whatever. And you can make a decent living if you if you really go for it. Um, it just needs the right guidance. And, and um, therefore, I also see the styles become pretty much similar. Um, and, and when I started, it was different. Everybody developed his own style. It was not that focused as as uh, specific as a gymnastic training, for yeah. example, or a gym gymnastic mentality. Like we have to do that ten thousand times. You create your own style, and you want to be unique. You want to be original, right? Um, I imagine the sort of media and YouTube uh, thing kind of plays into that. You know, a lot of people starting out now watch YouTube before they like talk to someone or like go to dance school. Is, do you think that's influencing how? people are dancing as well or starting out in terms of style yeah 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 of course um, <clears throat> back then it was more a, a social thing also like you want to come up for represent your city for example yeah, and yeah, you yeah. come there and you learn to know people uh, now it's it's not anymore anymore about that it's, it's, right. it's you see okay this is the the trophy we can win and this is the money we're gonna aim for that yeah you know we have we want to have that endorsement yeah and this is, this is different 
yeah. But I, I don't want to talk bad about it. I'm, no, I'm not talking about just bad different about times, it. I guess. It's different times. Yeah, yeah. And uh, usually we have on our podcast mostly um, poets or writers. And I'm kind of looking at dance as also a storytelling with your body. Mm -hmm. So how would you define, like, what stories are you trying to tell through your dance? Ooh. <laughs> uh, what stories I, I, I try to tell? Um, Because you mentioned, like, you want to express also the human experience and vulnerability, authenticity. But, um, yeah. like, is there a specific story or do you just create? Well, there, there, there is this this one thing and, and that that's that obsession of becoming better every time you you know you 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 try to 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 do new stuff you never did before mm -hmm. you want to create new stuff that nobody did before but of course everybody did it already <laughs> <laughs> there are more than a billion people on this planet um yeah t w what i try to tell is basically to be myself mm. And this is this is very difficult. If you start from a, a fundament, you, you you have a vocabulary of moves and, and, and ways to move within that. So, in the, in the I think in the first 10 years it's about knowing that vocabulary, right? And after that is about letting it go and and to to see how you how you can flow from from one to another to there to there and and, and to let go of that that fundament. Is there some things that you're still like things that you haven't reached yet that you're still oh, striving yeah. for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, many things actually. Um, yeah, such as just as an example, if we will get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there there is this this move. Uh, it's called air flare, <laughs> and my uh, my companions are like like masters in this move, and and I really suck at it. <laughs> yeah. And um, what does it take to get there? Like the practice or the The perseverance I don't know <laughs> I, I don't know I, I practice it every day but uh, I, I just won't get it <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's it's related to uh, to, to, to talent maybe <laughs> um, no no but, but of course um, I think a physical the physical aspect of, of, of the human body um, just like I mentioned I'm, I feel I'm, I'm very flexible mm. Um, in, in, that's a big benefit. In some cases, it's it's not. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, but but also when when in 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 my development, I also see that I'm getting more interested in different styles, like like ballet. Like how, how is it possible that they have a posture like that? And then they fly at some point. <laughs> yes, they, they they look so <laughs> feather light. Yeah, and, and 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 when they look at us, they think the same. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also a very rough um, job. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, everything that, like, physically, you have also a lot of pain, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, it looks easy, but it's definitely not. <laughs> no, no. But, but, but like I mentioned, like, it, it's, also a, it's also an obsession to, you really want to do this. Mm. It's, it's a life dedication till now. And then I hope it's, it's going to continue for a long time. Um, but yeah, three years ago I got this uh, I got this, this accident within dancing, mm. and I had to go for a surgery, for example. So now my 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 leg is full of titanium. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's it, you sign for it, and and um, at that moment you also realize, oh, so I cannot do this and this and this anymore. Do I want to continue dancing? Yes or yeah. no? But it's a feeling, you know. It, it yeah. cannot you cannot stop, and you. You want to be original as well, so you create new ways to, to, to dance around it and flow around it, and it becomes your plus. Yeah, yeah. You turn your struggles into the presence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What does your uh, routine look like My when routine. you guys get together? <laughs> uh, it is different. It's always different. If right. we go into a, um, a research period for a theater piece, then, 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 then we are together, and it's it's... It's not based on on the physical uh, condition, but but more about creating new tools and a new language to tell, to story tell. Um, but yeah, if if I'm free, I, I I like to wake up, stretch, go to the gym, and, right, and, and, and practice, go home, eat good. Okay, good. That's <laughs> yeah. good. That's good. Got to keep the body fit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's what's your life outside dance? Is there a life outside dance? <laughs> no, he's a professional. <laughs> <laughs> But I I, I, comp 
Um, I'm a composer, so I compose music. Um, and and I, I really love that balance, that when mm. I push it too much and then maybe I get injured or, or s- sour muscles, I... I uh, yeah, I, I go behind my um, my laptop and I start producing music. Oh, cool! Yeah, that's got to be quite a big part of the whole process as well. Music and dance because they go, you know, one on one go together, right? Yeah, hand in hand. Do yes. you have particular uh, rhythms you guys are into? Like, is it is it something that you know you're known for? Do, do certain groups have certain tastes in music that that you prefer, or or is it um, kind of as and when? It it. it this is also related to the, the the story you want to tell, right? Yeah, and 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 the the, the audience you're targeting. Like, if you target an audience for for uh, a general audience, let's say like that, it's nice to have a storytelling music that people can can live into it. So the dance is is on top of that. Um, but if you really want a, a, a dance telling story, then then yeah, you try to keep the music as open as possible, and then create more in, in soundscapes, so the it, it, it creates space for dance to tell. And how involved are you guys when you're doing theater with you know the lighting and the music and the stage design and all all that sort of stuff? Does that all come together, or like who, how, how does that work? Well, we we, we work with a um, a light designer eventually, but. Um, in a practical way, I I, I I learned that, and I'm I'm still learning. We all still learning <coughs> that we um, we want to integrate that from the beginning because it's yeah it's it's part part of the artistic process. Um, you can create so many many beautiful scenery just by standing at one point and and, and change lights or, or yeah or or the music yeah 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 and and and. F- I think till now we we just create from from dance and human perspective but yeah my my vision is that it it uh it meets each other from the beginning of the process mm. already yeah and how much like different cultures influence your uh, productions also because you're quite a diverse group um as in uh like i don't know I'm, i was thinking now like you know like sufi dancing is a certain way of like do you have any influences from that you bring from your cultures that cultural dance yeah um no actually not actually not um but an interesting question because last year we we got asked to to make a piece about our roots and i was like oh nice i'm gonna make a piece about indonesian dance and but wait i'm also dutch (laughs) And uh, that has uh, quite of a uh, uh, cruel history. Yeah. Huh. So we decided to make a, um, a piece with our own dang- dance language that is not not cultural related, but um, to tell the story mm. about our, our identity. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what, how it was back then and, and what it brought to us now as, as as human again. Yeah. Yeah. This is gonna be the ongoing thread in the story everything is mm-hmm. as human as human experience yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's nice um what are you excited about what am i excited about yeah uh, any special projects we should know about <laughs> <laughs> well we, we've been thinking about a new project we want to make i cannot tell tell much about it um but we I'm, will not I'm tell anybody. But I'm really excited about uh, about the team mm. and, and, and 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 the vision towards it. And I hope everything takes out the way we want to be, like from the streets to the seats. Mm. Then I yeah, then I'm so happy. Yes. Cool. That's exciting. Um, so for our listeners in Amsterdam, where can they find you on the streets? Do you have certain spots or, uh, or are you like a roaming, roaming band? Well, if, if, if the weather is good, and um, that's occasionally, um, you can find us on the Rembrandt Square. Rembrandt Square, okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. But for now, we are busy in the studio mm. creating our new, new projects, um, which hopefully will release in, uh, in April. Yeah. Is it important for you to go back to the streets once in a while? It's the essence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it is very important for us to go yeah. back there and to feel this the, the people on on the street that are real. Yeah. 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 The grind, the real the thing. The grind, yeah. the real thing, the hustle. Yeah. yeah, this is this is where we came from and, and, yeah. and this is also what we don't want to forget. 
Not to become too cocky and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Never mind Obama. You prefer a bread square. <laughs> we'll cut that out, right? <laughs> Keep it. <in>. He's like <laughs> <laughs> me dissing Obama. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's not going to listen. <laughs> oh, you never know. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's not busy. <laughs> he's writing books. What else he has to do? Yeah. <laughs> Um, sure. Yeah? Do you yeah. have any more questions? Uh, do I? Yeah. Uh, to me, or does he <laughs> no, have questions? Do you have questions? <laughs> <laughs> do you have questions? <laughs> I don't know. I, well, I mean, what are your hobbies, actually? Because we covered the dance and the music, but then... I'm, 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 actually, I'm searching for a new hobby. <laughs> Growing uh, things, so maybe, growing things in in Amsterdam, <laughs> like like what plants, <laughs> tomatoes. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's 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 not my hobby. But but who knows? Maybe one day, if I decide to stop dancing, change of career. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I don't have any any other hobbies. I I, I love food. I love traveling, of course. Um, I, I hope I can can find out how, how I could. Uh, make more more brilliant dishes mm. yeah. okay what, what's your favorite dish uh, or cuisine or i really love sushi ah oh, nice sushi's good <laughs> sushi's good sushi's good. Sushi good healthy is too japanese food yeah japanese nice. food yeah, in particular it's not so easy to get some good japanese food here in amsterdam I don't know. in my humble opinion yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've been to japan so <laughs> well after being in japan yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, so I guess with the food moment. <laughs> and on a high. <laughs> and on a high note. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah, so for our audience listening, where can they find you guys online in general? Website, social media, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we have a, a, a website and it's called fractalcollective.com. So check us out. You, you're gonna see our upcoming uh, projects, and, and if you if you're interested, cool. And is the documentary on there as well, or is that separate? No, no. <laughs> um, we would like to release the documentary on, on some platforms, but it's in uh, it's in development. Yeah, and, and, and until now, it's uh, it goes paired hand in hand with our uh, uh, theater production from the streets to the seats. That's in three parts. Uh, one part is a street show, second part is a documentary, and the third part is the, the theater piece. Okay, exciting. Yeah, we'll share all the links on our website. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for, for speaking me. with us. And for our audience listening at home, you can find us on www.wordappodcast.com where you'll find our social media as well as past and current episodes. Doei! Bye. <laughs> <laughs>